The giant arthropods of the Carboniferous, or in the Mississippian and then Pennsylvanian if you're in the US, are some of the most common things to see at different paleontological displays, be they museums, random sideshows, or in many kinds of documentary, including walking with monsters. And this seems to be the case pretty much globally, with large evidence of arthropods coming from parts of the Grand Canyon and also parts of France, and again, just basically globally. And that makes sense. This would have been a cooler world, but with a lot more oxygen in the atmosphere because of the large rainforest that had formed across large parts of the globe. And that's because this is when trees first evolved. They could spread basically anywhere. Among these, Arthropleura was the largest, reaching potentially 10 feet in length or a bit over 3 meters in the largest species of Arthropleura, and it seemingly lived throughout the Cambrian and maybe a little bit into the period just afterwards, the Permian. Arthropleura would have been a myriapod, which is to say it would have been closely related to things like millipedes and centipedes because it also would have had many legs, but myriapods are more than just that today even, and that includes two smaller groups. The first being the pseudocentipedes, which are so named because, like centipedes, they only have one pair of legs on each leg segment, but also they seem more like millipedes in the way they behave, being generally herbivorous with a few exceptions. There's also the parapodans, which are fairly small and again, more like millipedes, except living in the dirt and eating whatever kind of debris ends up in that dirt. They're detritivores, they're just eating leaf litter. There's also fossils of animals like Pneumodesmus, which dates to about 428 million years ago during the Silurian period, as opposed to the oldest fossils of Arthropleura, which date to about 348 million years ago. So there's a pretty big gap in our knowledge for the very first versions of the myriapods versus the very late versions of the myriapods. And this one kind of falls somewhere in between, and hopefully we can find out more for this. And fortunately, fossils have been found that do show more for this. Specifically, it's fossils that were micro-CT scanned, with the fossils still actually inside of the rock. And that's able to show new data on both the body and the head, for the first time ever, of Arthropleura. And we're finally getting to a better picture of what it would have been like. For the body of Arthropleura, it's been generally thought of as being closer to millipedes than centipedes, because millipedes have two pairs of legs on each of their body segments, at least past the column, which is this kind of first segment just behind the head. And then centipedes have just one pair of legs on each of those body segments. And it seemed like Arthropleura was similar, but these fossils are better preserved, and yeah, it definitely had those two pairs of legs. It also had other traits that do align it a bit more with things like the millipedes, including a distinct nathal lobe, which is essentially these rough and very heavily armored parts of the mouth that it could use to rasp up and grind down different plant material. The antennae also were preserved very well, and you can see that they have seven little pieces. And that's what we see in millipedes, but not centipedes. So again, really seems like Arthropleura was much more like a millipede than it was a centipede. That said, there are still some traits that do make it seem at least slightly closer to the centipedes, or at least somewhere in between centipedes and millipedes. For example, on the column, it does still have one set of legs, something we see in centipedes, but in centipedes, they're heavily modified into these very sharp pincers that they use to inject venom. And it doesn't seem like it had that morphology, but the legs were still present. There's also two sets of maxillae, which are these little sets of limbs that help aid in feeding, pulling food towards the mouth. In modern millipedes, there's only one set of these, but in centipedes, there's still two. So we're seeing some of these kinds of transitions of different traits going more towards the millipede line rather than away from it. And again, very distinctly, the seven antenna, as well as the column not necessarily having those large pincers does help to support this idea. Arthropleura, though, still had some traits that were not like centipedes or millipedes, and that's more specifically the stocked eyes which it would have had. Stocked eyes don't exist in any myriapods today, However, when we look back at some of their older relatives, we do start to see some stocked eyes. So potentially this is just an older holdover that was maintained until eventually the stocked eyes just waned away and that hadn't been the case yet in Arthropleura. Because they're so different, centipedes and millipedes are thought to be, yes, still myriapods, but very early diverging myriapods, at least from one another. Meanwhile, things like the pseudocentipedes would have broken off later than that because they're so similar to millipedes, at least behaviorally. However, genetic data was starting to suggest that no, that wasn't the case at all, and those earlier lineages broke off, and then centipedes and millipedes diverged from each other much later. And for the first time with Arthropleura, we're actually seeing some physical evidence of that. It's been really hard to find good evidence for that because 
Insects and also things like myriapods, crustaceans can oftentimes be very hard to fossilize because they're made out of chitin, which isn't necessarily a mineral the way that a snail's shell is. This means that it breaks down faster and is harder to fossilize. It still can in many cases, we've just shown that. However, that also means we're just missing large parts of the picture. And so many of these fossils of Arthropoda were actually pretty partial, with just little sections of the body and legs. Many fossils of early myriapods are very partial. You just get little chunks of them because the rest of them just didn't fossilize. And so what that means is it's actually still really hard to place down where Arthropleura should be in the greater myriapod family tree. And a large part of that is like, we can go, yeah, sure, it's close to millipedes, but it's also clearly not an actual millipede, or at least a crown group millipede, essentially not one of the ones that is, as far as we know for today, anatomically modern. It doesn't have all of the traits of modern millipedes, it's just close to that these traits, there's also some really interesting questions that that does bring up, because potentially things like the stocked eyes weren't because it was traveling on land, but because maybe it was actually aquatic, or at least semi-aquatic. This is a really interesting idea, because genetically we know myriapods started to split off when they still would have been in the water, at least as far back as we know. So, okay, great, that's wonderful, but once they moved on to land, maybe they lost some of these traits. And it's hard to know, but Arthropora is an interesting example. Because I mentioned, the largest Arthropleura species could get up to 10 feet long, again, about 3 meters. But that's at a specific time where the forests were waning. And so despite the Carboniferous being known for having very high oxygen content, at that time it really didn't. And that's important when you're thinking about how these animals function. Because when they're on land, they breathe through spiracles, which are these little holes in the exoskeleton that allow air in. Now, if there's not enough oxygen, those holes need to get larger, and eventually the entire body just collapses because it's too filled with holes. Meanwhile, if there's more oxygen in the air, those holes can remain smaller and still have the strong structure and support that the body needs for the exoskeleton. These large Arthropleura specimens come from a time where you would not expect it to be that large. But if it was in the water, and potentially even oxygen-rich water with a lot of plant life, maybe it could have gotten that large as especially certain types of book gills can be even more efficient than lungs because they're pulling out basically all of the oxygen in the water. So maybe that's why they were able to achieve such large sizes. Of course, this is all just to say that it's a really interesting animal. It, again, kind of links the centipedes and the millipedes. However, again, seems closer to the millipedes than the centipedes. It was likely also to detritivore, but also may have been aquatic or semi-aquatic, something we don't really see in modern myriapods. So there's a lot going on with Arthropleura, and hopefully we'll get some more fossils, and maybe even some various trackways and things like that to really understand what it was doing.